Hello, it's your boy Big Ski, and we're back with another episode of No Jumper Sports. Professor X is at the mother-loving table, and he got a lot to say today. So we're going right into it. What's the big old deal? What's going on, Big Ski? How you doing? I'm cooling. Yeah? Yeah. You chilling? Come on, man. We were just talking about energy before we started. Correct. You know what had really good energy? What's that? That interview we just did. Le'Veon Bell? Le'Veon Bell. We got See it on the ball? Come on, man. We got a whole life like... We got that interview coming up. Just a couple of minutes. Stick with us. We're going to talk about a few things. Uh, Le'Veon. Amazing energy. Man. That super. set the tone for, I think, how excited I am for this show. Yeah. Like, he really, like, lit the flame under my ass. I was like, holy oh, pause. shit. Pause. But he go said, ahead. All right, we can't do sports terms here. Is pause. We, we still on heavy pause? I'm not going to I mean, do you it. did it to yourself, not me. All right. But, yeah, back to Le'Veon Bell, man. All that right. Huge interview. Huge mm. interview. Because you're not going to see Le'Veon Bell in that type of atmosphere ever. You're not going to see him with a smile on his face like that, having fun, talking about his moms, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Legendary, bro. Legendary. Can't wait for you guys to see that one. Uh, last week, we had our last episode drop. Right. What'd you think of it? Huge. Darren Collison, bro. UCLA. Mm-hmm. Etiwanda. Mm-hmm. Rancho Cucamonga. I feel on, man. like people who knew about him from out here learned a lot of shit about him still. Hell yeah. Out of that interview. You asked so many good questions and dug into things that like he wasn't expecting. You caught him off guard. Mm -hmm. I think that interview went wild. And I was reading the comments on this one. And people really have respect for him out here. He is like an actual, me not being from the West Coast, mm -hmm. I don't realize that stuff. Like, yeah, yeah it, it's different, bro, when you actually like have somebody that's sitting across from you and it's just like, they giving you that face and it's just like, come on, man, break. But guess what? You're the homie, you're mm -hmm. from LA, I got the vibe, you are, you're from the IE, I'm from the LA Compton area. It's all good, man, the energy is right. I know what to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You haven't talked about UCLA in years probably. You probably have to these college kids you're playing provision with. But at the end of the day, Josh Ship, Kevin Love, mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook, Darren Collison, Jordan Farmar, like, come All on, legitimate bro. pros, yeah. Crazy. Like, come on. That Aaron Afalo is there. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Like, that's what we want to talk about because that's what need light shed it on. 100%, man. You feel what I'm saying? The journey, the actual journey. When you get to the NBA, everybody know you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I want to. I want them to know that journey. And once they find out it was from here, it started here, crazy. I think that journey is so important. I think what they're doing after the fact, yeah. and starting this camp, like, do you want to tell them a little secret about what we're gonna do, we got coming up, or maybe save it a little bit? Once, once they. All right, we're gonna save that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. not let's not put it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they want to know. But no, I mean, I've been reading all the comments, and I wanted to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to everybody who has tuned into these episodes. Everyone who's dropping comments and mm -hmm. showing their appreciation uh, for Big Ski, mm -hmm. for me, which I was honestly was the last thing I was expecting. Like this is really new to me. Like that was the first interview I ever sat down on. Like. Huh. I have been sitting here for four years, like doing everything I could behind the scenes to just figure out what I could do mm -hmm. to help with this podcast, mm -hmm. with all these shows. And I found like a really good groove. I found like I was able to see a lot, help a whole lot of other people. Mm -hmm. I never really saw myself on this side of the table. That right. first interview with uh, with Darren, all I could do was look at all the camera angles and think where everything was, look over <laughs> at Riley and think, man, is that what I look like the whole time? <laughs> and just wondering which angle's on, how we sound, yeah. you know, how everything looks, and like I have all these things running through my head, and I realized really quickly watching that back that that is terrible podcasting because mm -hmm. I wasn't focused on what we were doing here, and like I know that I have a whole lot of things to learn, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that each one of these gets a little bit better, a little bit easier, and that, you know, I appreciate this patience. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Mm -hmm. You guys are interested in sports, and, you know, you are, we love sports. Exactly. Like, this is the one thing I couldn't say. Like, when you, and this, I don't want people thinking I've been, like, trying to jump on any show that comes mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. like, trying to insert my way into here any way possible. Like, I've been very much wanting to 
stay behind and do as many things as I can to help other people utilize yeah. the stage and platform. I really didn't think of it yeah. for myself. But when you asked me to do it, mm -hmm. and the fact that it was sports, and it was something that I was looking passionate <laughs> about, like, I wanted to make this as great as I could for you, but like, you know what I mean, man? Like, I wanted to just put really work out. I know we're a little bit slow out the gate, but I think that there's a whole lot of potential here. I think mm -hmm. the interview that we just did was a great way to mm -hmm. really show what the show can be. We got some crazy ass vlogs planned. This, you know, this is gonna be, this is not gonna be like anything else that you've seen in terms of the No Jumper podcast. Right. We're trying to do things a little bit differently yeah. here with the sports, with the athletes. Mm -hmm. We're getting oh. tapped in. We've got some fun shit planned with, for them. What I wanna say on that, Josh, is like, man, mm -hmm. I commend you so much for saying that, bro, because one thing about it, fam, one thing about it, bro, yeah. real talk. Okay. I remember, my first episode getting on at the end of the day. The same two people that's in this room right now, Riley and Josh, you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Kiki, you got this. You keep pasting, you keep walking, like, you know, just breathe. You got, you've been, you, you got this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? If I have two people believing in me right now, I, I should be believing in myself a little bit more. You feel what I'm saying? So it was totally. just like it was just like you know what, man up, get up over there. It, no matter what happens, just sit there, say what you got to say, and just be cool. And it's crazy because it was so easy for me to man up you because I see all the potential with you. But like, there's so like when you, feel you what I'm saying? once you sit on this side, it feels a whole lot different. A whole different, lot all of different, sudden, bro. Whole, it's just like the air is different. Like all of a sudden, it's like hotter <laughs> over here. Like it, honestly, I sit like eight feet away <laughs> and this feels like it's on the other side yeah. of the planet. It so, really does, you know? And then now I want to uh, touch on the basis of how, like with the comments and stuff too, because mm -hmm. we really do appreciate that y'all. You got to understand, man, I sat there, this would happened all in a matter of two to three weeks, y'all, this idea. And I came up with the idea, I presented it, did one episode with Ricky and mm -hmm. I, I thought about it. I say, man, how can I make this more fun? Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It wasn't thinking far. You feel what I'm saying? It wasn't thinking like just years from now. It was just how can I make this more fun? And I'm like, man, the people have not seen Josh yet. Josh mm -hmm. knows sports. You feel what I'm saying? And it was just like. Relative to everybody here, but yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like. Bing. I text my brother. Fire, mm -hmm. call me. And he called me. Mm -hmm. Kiki, Josh, yes, I am all for that. I am all for that. And then I came in that next morning, had an interview that day. Wasn't, didn't I have an interview that day? Or it was the next following day. But I came in, mm -hmm. Josh, would you like to be a part of this? Kiki, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I need you a part of this. Uh, walked off, came back with a smile on his face and was like, I love to do that, Kiki. And I was just like, bro, it's going to be rough. It's going to be hard. I mm -hmm. don't even know what these comments is going to be like. You know what I mean? But guess what? We're great human beings, bro. And we need to show that. You feel what I'm saying? Straight up. We need to show it. And, and then it's one thing, too, I wanted to touch on before we finish this. Yep. I don't want y'all, the viewers in the world, to think this is going to be like an actual, like, sports center we about to just sit here and critique every you know what i mean we just it's sit too here. hard we got a yeah. weekly sports show you know and until this thing gets a little bit bigger right it's about sports that's it's what me that's what connects us like look at the two of us people on the Come surface on would never think that right me and you would be have anything in common but sports is something that like very much ties us together and is like sparked you know one of the Bro, best friendships i have out here watch this yeah this is how y'all gonna know we don't plan on Sports Center and ESPN. Family, mm -hmm. teach me about hockey right now, cause I don't know a goddamn. Why do the guy that blocked the goal, the goalie, do? Yep. Why could be having all that shit on? I know is that puck heavy or some shit. So let me tell you. Okay. Right after this Le'Veon Bell interview, let's get to it. <laughs> <thing. laughs> Y'all been waiting on this. It is No Jumper Sports with Le'Veon Bell, y'all. Let's go. It's in here. It is time. It's that time.
How you doing, man? I feel good, man. I feel good. I'm blessed, bro. Heck yeah. I heard you just recently had a birthday celebration. I did. I did. You know what I'm saying? Happy birthday, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. For sure. Dirty 30. Dirty 30. Dirty 30, man. I remember the real thing. I remember those days. Shout out to you and that, man. But thank you for having like coming through, bro. We highly appreciate this. You're a fan favorite, a world favorite at that too. So I want to get in first with Madison Grove High School. Talk to me about that. Yeah. Uh well, Groveport, Madison, that's what it's called. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and uh, I mean, shoot, I mean, growing up in high school, you know, um, it was cool. I mean, uh, it was kind of a mix, you know, of black and white people. It was mm-hmm. cool. Um, it was like a, it was, I don't know, growing up, when I was growing up, around, like, my friends and everything, we held each other accountable and we challenged each other so hard. Mm-hmm. And, like, sports, even in, you know, in school, like, yeah. with grades and stuff like that. Um, you know, I... Still to this day, I still hang around the same people that I grew up with in high school. You know, it's the wow. craziest part. Yeah, so um, you know, high school was a good time for me, even though it kind of flew by. Uh-huh. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm, it's crazy <laughs> you even ask about it. Like I'm uh-huh. thinking back on it. It's like, damn, like you did a lot. Was so long ago. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like, that's right. it feels like a minute. It feels like a minute, yo. But no, nah, it was great memories though. You know, Groveport. Um, you know, it was a good area. Mm-hmm. Um, helped me. You know, become the person I am today. Help form, shape me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always kind of had a chip on my shoulder, you know, because a lot of people didn't believe I could really, you know, do what, do you what did. I did. You Straight know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I can just remember times, like, even in the high school, uh, in the high school locker rooms and stuff, or just walking around the school, um, and I'm saying I'm going to the NFL mm-hmm. or I'm going to college or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, people would kind of laugh or, like, kind of, sh- you know, sh- shrug it off yeah. just because they was didn't the really game. believe it. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is what it is, and that always helped motivate me and, um, you know, that's why I'm sitting here today with you guys. That's you know? fire, bro. Yeah. What that's gave you that type of uh, determination at like a young age to know that you had that chip on your shoulder, to know you were gonna make it, that you're gonna play college ball, you're going to the NFL? Bro, honestly, bro, I think, uh, I mean, I think, I think it's just the way my mom raised me. My mom raised mm-hmm. me like she did, you know, such a wonderful job of like, you know, because she was on her all her by herself. You know, mm-hmm. me, and my two younger brothers, um, she raised us. You know, um, and I think just kind of watching her grow up. Like when I was growing up, just watching her and how hard she worked, mm-hmm. making sure. Because when I was growing up, I never re- really realized that we was poor. You know, my mom yeah. kind of walked around. She always had a smile on her face, mm-hmm. like low key. Like I didn't, I was a kid who never really asked for much, but whatever I did ask for, like she made sure she got it, right. and it mm-hmm. didn't, it didn't make, like it didn't seem as if like, like we were poor. You know, mm-hmm. so like like high school basketball or like. AU basketball, mm-hmm. when I'm traveling and stuff, if I wanted some basketball shoes or whatever. She always, like, made that shit happen. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? And I don't know how. That's fine, You know what I'm bro. saying? And I was a kid who, like, I, I have one pair of shoes for the whole season, and I wouldn't even mind because it's just, like, that's just what that's I was. Where, like, where I, I got the shoes from. I wanted, like, whatever shoes it was, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go out here and get buckets in these. Go out there and snap <laughs> with these things, you know what I'm saying? Or a pair, right. pair of cleats or whatever it was, you know. Yeah. Like, whatever it was, like, she always made sure she got them. And, um. Shout you out to moms, man. So I think, you know, watching her when I was growing up um, made me want to be like, man, I got to, okay, she doing all this, making sure I'm straight. You know, I got to make sure she's straight. Straight you up. Know? And, um, you know, so she always kind of make, she was so hard on me growing up, like making sure I was on before the street lights on. You know, mm-hmm. I really couldn't go to parties and hang out with people. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I was kind of so focused on school and sports, she had, bro. She, had, she, had, she was uh, training you right, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got me for right, real, you know real. what I'm saying? It was literally, it was literally just like, she's like one of them, one, she, I think I got it from her, like trying to prove people wrong just because of the fact that like, she wanted to show people she can do it by herself, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. My dad, you know, wasn't around. He wasn't involved in my life. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure she was to the point where like, she trying to show him, like, oh, I'm going to raise I got my this. three sons. So I got this. I don't need I got you. This. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that all motivated me. Ooh, I wasn't mind. expecting that one, bro. Yeah, real, talk, that, bro. real talk, bro. She raised three men, fam. So to you single mothers that's out there, don't give up. It might be Not hard, but look what you could create. Right. Straight up. Real talk. So, man, what you what position did you play when you played basketball? Point guard. What? Yeah, I'm the point. What? You yeah. got you got vision? Well, I know I mean I I see him running for you. Say, <laughs> hey, that's bro, a lot of sense. You're, <laughs> I want to say this too. Like, shout out to you because a lot of running backs cannot be patient and let the linemen work. Right. Mm-hmm. You are a king at that. Right. I mean, 
what they tell you? Hit the hole, hit the hole, hit the hole. No, I, they got to do what they got to do but first before you, I hit that the hole. The craziest thing is growing up, my mm-hmm. whole life, that's all I heard, you know. Um, I mean, like, why you why you tiptoeing? Like, why, mm-hmm. why you pussyfoot? Like, mm-hmm. it's, that's that's the the terms you all, like always hear. Yep. Outside of my uncle, because my uncle, he's the one who kind of like, kind of put that in my head in, in, a, in a sense. Like, when I was four years old and I started playing. Like, mm-hmm. when I first started playing, he like, first I played O-line. So he had me in O-line first. So mm-hmm. when I first started playing my first year, first two years, I'm playing O-line. Wait. Yes. Yes, what he did. Yep. Maybe I'm, you were a lineman? That's how he did it. That so, should be. Don't that suck, though, when they make you get on here? No. Man, I want to run the ball. It, how did you it was the, there? It was the, it's, a, man, it's crazy now that I'm sitting here 30 years old. Yeah. And I realized it whenever, when I did realize it, that was such the, 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 the smartest thing to do. Because hmm. as a little kid, I was four years old when I first went out there. Mm-hmm. To get out all the nervousness and being scared of getting hit and all that, okay, every play, just hit the person right in front of you. Every play, don't even worry mm-hmm. about nothing else. We're going to just say go, and y'all hit, you hit right now. Yeah. So I played O-line. D line, okay. That was that was it. I, I he ain't put the ball in my hands until like my third year I started playing. That's tight, bro. And then, you know, once that happened, um, I started playing quarterback. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was playing quarterback. He thought he was big and everything. Bro, I bet you saying. he was out of there. Huh? It's like damn. <laughs> so I started playing quarterback for a little minute, and then um, like me and my cousin always like going back and forth for quarterback and running back because mm-hmm. growing up, me and him were always playing together. Yeah. And um, so we like literally, if I was the quarterback, he was playing running back. He was running, or and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that was all the way up until high school. To I got my real position was the running back because okay. at quarterback I was always just taking off every time. I, I was went. about to say, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I could tell I you was out there <laughs> scrambling. Was seventeen wing bootleg? Out of here! <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I'm out of here! Seventeen wing bootleg. <laughs> that sounded like one of the high school called. Damn, I heard that in a minute. Like yeah. whoa, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Seventeen wing bootleg. God damn! I'm out of here. That's when I knew Terry Mixon. As soon as I heard seventeen wing bootleg. He's not throwing the ball to nobody. <laughs> 18, he's going to throw the ball because that's his side. He got to throw that side. And I was like, all right, let me just hit him on the out. <laughs> let me catch that real quick. But, you know what I'm saying? It's, oh, it's over. But no lie, man, I want to uh, say, like, you did an amazing job on your debut college game, bro. Crazy, bro. 141 yards, two touchdowns. Sick with it. So how did you even but, end up deciding you want to go to Michigan State? Like, what was the recruiting process like for you? All right, so yeah, my man, I can sit here and talk all day about that <laughs> process. That's what I want to hear about. That's yeah. what we want to do. <laughs> all right, so damn, this be a lot of shit I might forget, but like, no. all right, so and I might have to go back and shit. But just try to follow me on this recruiting process. So like, okay, mm-hmm. obviously I get my first offer, um, my junior year. So the first day they can like kind of. Send out offers mm-hmm. for like juniors, high school juniors, yeah. or whatever. I get offers. Like I get three offers. I get Bowling Green, mm-hmm. I get Marshall, and I get Eastern Michigan all in the first week. I'm thinking like, it's oh up. shit, let's go. It's up. It's up. Let's mm-hmm. fucking go. Like, it's it's up. You know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 mom, it's step one. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. It's step one. All right, I'm getting the offers, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go to college, go crazy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm thinking they about to pile in. You know what I'm saying? Because I am snapping in high school. I don't get yeah. me wrong. Like I'm doing my thing and stuff. I'm going to camps. Mm-hmm. Going to uh, doing one on ones and showing up in camp, so all the mm-hmm. college like recruiting coaches and seeing me and stuff. So it's like, all right, I'm starting to get offers with it, right? So after that first week of they sending out offers, I ain't getting no more offers, right? I played all my junior year, had a good year. Mm-hmm. Played all my senior year, got no more offers, right? Then we're playing. So all right, so no more offers. So now we're in like November ish, December. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a, I'm about to graduate high school early too, so uh, I got to make a decision earlier than any like most of the other most high school of the athletes, yeah. Because uh, unless they was graduating early, because right. I had to go to college, I was going to college in, in the you know second semester of where I was wherever I was going. Yeah. So I got my three offers from Bowling Green, Marshall, and Eastern Michigan. Um, fast forward November, December. All right, now I'm in basketball season, right? Mm-hmm. Now I only, get, I only get to play like three, four games in the yeah. basketball season. Um, Michigan State ended up having a, um, it was like a fight between like the football team and like a fraternity or something. So they had a whole bunch of players who, were, who got kicked off the team Damn. and they lost, co- yeah, lost college. That's, that's and stuff. a bad look. It was terrible. That's a bad look. But a, a team getting into it with a frat? No, that's that's a bad look. Yeah, so it, it was it happened like a while, like right before I went in, like. Mm-hmm. So it was like a whole bunch of players got kicked off the team and stuff, and they had so basically they got scholarships open. It's like all, yeah. all of a sudden scholarships is yeah. open. Like oh shoot, mm-hmm. we need running backs, we need this that that. So they came to one of my my basketball games, mm-hmm. 
and it's crazy in that basketball. I didn't know they was in the stands or nothing. Like I ain't know. Like you playing ball, like, you playing basketball. Ball. You and luckily, I ended up snapping. Yet. I ended up snapping that game. Had like forty. I ended up fouling out too. It was like <laughs> fouling <laughs> I, out with forty. I fouled out with forty, and we lost. But I ended up snapping. They, they, I guess like just in that in that game in that little miss, they seen like, mm-hmm. all right, this, this kid got something. Yeah. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying so. They ended up offering me off a basketball game, not even football. So they even. <laughs> 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 I've never they, heard that in my life. Yeah. Nah. They came to my basketball game. What? Yeah, they offered me to play football. Obviously, they seen the football film and stuff, but they mm. didn't come to a football game. What? They came to my basketball game. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Out there playing hey. basketball. <laughs> Get up off me. Oh, I think oh, I'm mad. Oh, no, no, no. I was going crazy. I still remember, remember nah, the game. No, but I'm it. just saying, though, they there at a basketball game. and did, Oh, that's that's crazy. So bro. I ended up finding out that they was at the game because my principal, uh, Donis Teller, shout out to Donis Teller, too. Um, he was a great, like, father figure for me growing up. Mm-hmm. And he helped me a lot um, just in high school and stuff. And when I was at Groveport, like, he's one of those people who, like, came me on a straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. But he he's the one who told me um, – that, oh yeah, like Michigan State was at your game last night, man. Like when you had a game last night, and I was still, I was just upset we lost. You know what I'm saying? I was upset. I wouldn't even <laughs> trim my none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like I'm mad as hell we lost. Like damn. Who the fuck don't got no Michigan State in my yeah. game? Like right. cut the L. <laughs> yeah, like damn. Yeah. Nah, but obviously that made me feel better. Obviously, obviously made me feel better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Michigan State at the game, whatever. But yeah. Like, um, and they ended up offering me, so I took my visit to Michigan State and get my. Uh, when I'm at Michigan State, and I'm talking to Coach D'Antoni, I had my visit, whatever. Oh, let right, me I forget this part. So I get to Michigan State. It's like they offer me last minute, right? Uh huh. Like, because they just need some. My boss, my boss, I'm like a low recruit. I'm like a two star recruit. I don't really got no offers. I got three offers after the first week of high school, right? Oh, Lord. Work, first week they can offer. So I, I uh, go to Michigan State for like the visit. Uh-huh. The, the, campus is, the campus is dead because it's like everybody's on break. I was about to say, yeah. Tell you know what I'm saying? That. It's cold as hell. It's like hella snow mm-hmm. on the ground. So I just get there and I'm just like, oh, okay, Michigan State. Damn, this shit cool. Mm-hmm. Damn, this shit cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I, I'm, 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 I don't know nothing. Yeah, Bro, I don't know nothing. I had one pair of I'm, shoes back in the day. Yeah. Now I'm up here looking, it looked like the Wiz Carlton to me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I, to me, it was just like, damn, I'm just on this campus. Like, damn, I don't, I don't need nobody. Like, they had a, Pat White was like the the guy who was hosting me on my recruit. He from Columbus, Ohio, too. He had okay. a picture of the Central. So he had him hosting me. So he was like showing me around, but I, it was like no parties or nothing to really go to. Man. Like no like no fraternities or right. nothing to really you right. know, to turn up. So it was just like, I'm just going inside the dorms and like just kind of meeting like, you know, the team or whatever. Mm-hmm. And just chilling. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. It's that's cool. good like, for you though, man. Cause yeah. I went to UNLV and that's it in Vegas. Big parties. <laughs> but I'm saying usually on recruiting visits. Yeah, it's going up. The, yes. And it's they going want, up. They, they, mm-hmm. What they try to do is to get the recruit to come to the school, they have not show a good time. Like, they, oh, man. Like, they put him around a whole bunch of women. Watch me got game, and y'all going to understand what he's yeah, talking about. You know what I'm saying? Put around a whole bunch of women, like, you know what I'm saying, all the parties and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever you want to do, literally whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, on recruiting visits, it's like, all right, we're going to get that shit done. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, like, I was a guy who, like, wasn't really that highly recruited. It's, but, like, I didn't even care, though. It was just, like, yeah. to the point, it was just like, damn, like, I'm on Michigan State campus. Like, yeah. all right, let, like, let's fucking go. So, we had a visit. Whatever, and it ain't like I had like a crazy visit or whatever. It just was whatever. Like, yeah. I was just on campus. Like, yeah. And uh, so it's time to leave. And I'm talking to Coach Tan- uh, D'Antonio. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, like, he's like, uh, Lady, how you? Uh, he's like, how you feel? I'm like, shoot, I feel good, mm-hmm. Coach. You know, um, I'm glad to be here. Um, he was like, well, yeah, we're going to offer you. Um, we're going to offer you as a running back. Um, are you open to changing sides if it doesn't work out as a running back? I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, coach. Yeah, I said, I, I got no problem. Over, uh, I, if it don't work out running back, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's tight. Man, if, if I, if it, uh, because he had offered me, offered me like right, right there in person. I'm like, yeah, coach, I'm ready right now. Like, mm-hmm. I'm ready right now. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, I want you to go home and think about it. Blah, blah, blah. But in my head, I'm like, bro, bro I'm, where's the, the this where is I signed it. Right. It's like, yeah. but I, I, I let him say, I let him say what he had to say. Like, mm-hmm. all right, coach, I got you. I'm gonna go talk to my family about it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I get in the car with my mom. I'm like, mom, yeah, you just. They all damn, I see. I skipped something too. <laughs> so I get in the car. I'm like, Mom, um, you know, I'm, you know, where I'm going now, right? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So obviously, that was the the time where I'm like, all right, because confirmed, I'm going to Michigan State. But before this, I'm already committed to Bowling Green, and I had skipped uh, that part. Of it. Uh, I, so I have I skipped this part. Uh, uh, the process. I told you I'm gonna be thinking this shit. Uh-huh. Like, all right, so 
Bowling Green. All right, so I see. All right, so the Michigan State, when I had the football, the basketball game and all that stuff, right? Yeah. I'm already committed to Bowling Green, but nobody okay. knew. Okay. Like, it was like one of them, like, all right, they came to offer, they offered me. I went to the campus, whatever. I had was a, it just verbal agreement or were like? It was verbal. Okay. okay. So, you the, you so when I had the Bowling Green visit, mm-hmm. that was before the Michigan State visit, right? Okay. When I had that visit, that was the visit how the recruit visit is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, oh. they do what you want. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? That was the lit party. Like, that's why you read. That that's why you committed. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to go yeah. here, man. It's no, like, no, 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 I'm going to get to the commitment. I'm going to get to the commitment, bro. <laughs> trust me. I'm going to get to the commitment, bro. Trust me, bro. Because <laughs> the commitment part is crazy. I don't, like, okay. It's like a few people who know. Let's go. So, um, I get the, we, we get the bowling ring. Mm-hmm. The part of the, the visit Crazy, like, all right. They had like uh, one of the guys that already committed to Bone Green helps me, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we were there for that two days or that weekend, whatever. I'm there, so now I'm about to talk to the coach. I walk in, I walk into the room. It's not like about this size, whatever. Like the head coach in the office, whatever. Mm-hmm. I walk in, and the running back coach, I forgot exactly what his name is. Fuck, but let's just call him Kiki. All right, <laughs> the running back coach. He walk or I, I, I walk in. The running back coach to the side. And he was just like, Levy, are you ready, man? And then I was like, yeah, like, boom, boom, like, yeah, boom, boom. And then they, every, like, literally, like, every, like, they had hella coaches in the, um, mm-hmm. in the room. Mm-hmm. I'm, and he, uh, the coach was like, Levy, are you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. And everyone was like, yeah, let's fucking go. Oh my God, the best recruit we ever got. Oh my God. Like, I can't believe we got this recruit. Like, you know what I'm saying? They start going crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking in my head, like, did I just fucking commit? Like, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? What's like, you know what I'm saying? So they going crazy, like, like all the coaches and shit. <laughs> I'm just looking like, damn, like, all right, I guess I committed to the wrong me, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I don't want to like, man, shit on everybody's parade. You know what I'm saying? Everybody right. going crazy. So I'm saying it's like. Damn, I guess I'm committed to Bowling Green. I did have a great time. Damn, I do fuck with this spot. Hey. This is my, they, they was recruiting me the hardest, so it's like, I will fight. Like, I'm committed to Bowling Green, right? I can see that, like, being on stage at a rap concert and your brother like, you rap? Go ahead, go. Bro, it's like a 12,000 venue here. I, I ain't never did this in front of all the things, you know what I'm saying? Like, man. So, like, I, I was like, so I guess I was committed. I was like, damn, right, I'm committed. Like, fuck. All right, but it, at the time, I wasn't really tripping. Mm-hmm. It just was like a surprise because I didn't really come. I, I didn't know when he said, Are you ready? I didn't know you, you, you was asking, like, Am I ready to commit? Like, I yeah. thought you were just saying, like, like just asking, like, you know, since <laughs> I get a conversation going or something, like, you know what I'm saying? So, because um, oh, it was literally right when I walked in. Right like, in I didn't the door. Sit like, down or nothing. Hey! Like, it's like a trap. They was like, Let's go. Like, Let's they start going go. crazy. So, and my boy sitting there, like, <laughs> <laughs> Not, Not for real. Yet. Hold on. I got somewhere <laughs> else to go see next week. Hold up. Now, yeah, so I'm saying, so, but at this time, I didn't have the Michigan State offer, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm committed to Bowling Green, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So we leave the office, me, my mom, and my stepdad mm-hmm. leave the office, and we had parked like far, far as hell. Like the campus, we had to walk from like the office to the our car. We got to walk. Yeah, like we walking for a minute, like a mile type shit, like miles. Damn. So we walking, right? Getting the workout in back. Nah, nah, real shit. <laughs> we walking. Um, me, and my mom, and my stepdad, we ain't say, there's like no words said. Mm-hmm. Nothing said, right? As we walk, we get in the car. We're driving home from uh, Bowling Green now to Columbus, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing said for about 30 minutes, right? And then out of nowhere, my mom kind of looked in the mirror. She was like, she just straight up asked me, she's like, Lady, did you mean to commit? I was like, no, mom. No, oh I did not mean God. to commit. Like, you yep, know, she knew it. L- literally like that. Like she like literally just like just like because nothing was said, nobody was saying <laughs> exactly. nothing. Mm-hmm. Then she just like kind of looked and she was like, did you mean to commit? I was like, no, mom. Like, I ain't mean to commit. Like, I was like, I mean, I'm cool with it, but I didn't that wasn't like what I was trying to do. Like, I was just trying to sit down, enjoy myself, and hope for more offers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause you know what I'm saying? I still got like some full like, yeah. uh, you know some like season left, mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So it's like, all right. But that ended up happening, so I ended up committing to Bowling Green like accidentally, mm-hmm. in a, in a sense. So, but I, n- nonetheless, I did commit. So I ended up moving fast forward to the basketball game. Michigan State come, all right, now they offer. I'm sitting in Michigan State in front of Antonio. I'm like, Coach, Coach D, I'm ready, because nobody knows I really committed to Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. I ain't telling mm-hmm. them nothing, whatever. All Man, right. thank God you didn't. Right, because they would have been so hurt. So Ooh. now that I committed to Bowling, or now I'm ready to commit to Michigan State, right? So now I'm driving back home from Michigan State to Columbus. Mm-hmm. I was like, Mom, I want to go to Michigan State. You know where I want to go. She's like, All right. So now I got to call Bowling Green. This is the, this is one of the hardest phone calls I ever had to do because they uh-huh. were so. They, all right, they was the 
this 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 my first offer, and they rec was recruiting me the heaviest. Like they low key like any like calls they were able to do, they always made them to me. Like and yeah. just had that conversation, yeah. kept that relationship yeah. open with me. Like Gotta keep so they was record. always like I was like they number one guy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. That's key when you're trying to sign somebody, you know. Yeah, what for I mean? real. You gotta like. So, and they was the only shit. school who did that. Like yeah. I, every school that recruited me, they was the only one who was like recruiting me hard as hell like that. Right. Like, I had offers, other offers, but like they was the only one who was like on me, like yeah. we need you, like. And as a kid, that's dope. But I felt, you know, come I on now, like, I'm like, yeah, me, I like, yeah, like y'all right. want me like that, okay? Let's roll. And, I, and in my head, I'm a high school kid, but it's like, man, I be feeling like I need more offers than Bowling Green, but it's like they fucking with me, so it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I fuck with Bowling Green, you know Straight what I'm saying? So, um. The boat, the so what was I committing? Committing the and then oh yeah yeah so I, I'm, I'm at call. I'm at Michigan State right I'm in front of Coach D now I'm, I'm committing I told him my mom I I, I committing so now I got a call mm -hmm. this is one of the hardest parts of my life because it's like damn I got to call call these dudes and be like I ain't coming mm -hmm. so I end up calling the running back coach that's a dude that <laughs> <laughs> basically you know what I'm saying my bad yeah, oh, so. Ahead. I called the running back coach, the dude I've been like open communication with all the time and stuff, and I'm like, coach, you know what I'm saying? Michigan State offered, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I'm I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna go there. Like, I'm gonna go to Michigan State. You know, I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, y'all offering me. I wanted to go there, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I, I feel like Michigan State's a big girl. So he cut me off, he's like, trust me, don't worry about it, man. I know you're a special player. I just didn't understand why you didn't have no big offers like this. I didn't understand why you didn't got Ohio State offers like this. Wow. I was just hoping you ain't going somewhere else in the map. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like. If you oh, get a, he, that division, he, he, yeah, yeah. He, he was like, I was expecting you to get bigger offers. I know what type of player you are. He mm -hmm. said, I think you're the most special player I've seen on film in a long time. Is what he kept saying. That's fire. Wow. So he was like, um, you got the Michigan State offer. You're going there, man. I wish the best for you. You know what I'm saying? Just like I wish the best for you. You know what I'm saying? That's fire. Because I was going to Michigan State, so he, he, I, I think he was like one of those guys who like understood like, thing. Your talent is what it is. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I see that. I see that shit. You finally got your your chance. Like, go yeah. ahead. Like, you go know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no hard feelings for him. And that's tight because I bet you he still was like supporting and all of that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not dirty talking, like dirty macking you and all that shit. Like, right. that's dope that he did that, man. Yeah. So and yeah, that and, and it, 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 he made it easier for me because like me being but 17 at the time, it was like that was one of the hardest things for, like for me at that time. It's like, damn, like I don't know how the hell I'm about to you know call this coach and but he made it so much easier for me once I actually got on the phone and like that's tight. He kind of like made it easier for that's me. That's so, tight. My recruiting process is low key was crazy, yo. Yeah. So I end up, yeah. So I end up Michi coming to Michigan State. I get there early. Um. Then that's when everything kind of takes <laughs> over. Like so, I, so I kind of get I get there before all the other um like they, they got other oh actually they have another running back there who committed to Michigan State that was from Michigan. Oh. He was like the number one running back in Michigan. So he was and, like he was the city's favorite. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's still my guy though, Nick Hill. That's my okay. Yeah, he he's still one of them uh, one of them dudes I still talk to from like way back. You know what I'm right. saying? So, but he was like the number one uh, running back in Michigan. He already had committed to Michigan State too. We both okay. in the same class, so we came in early at the same time. We was cool. He cool as hell. That's right. Um, but obviously he was the bigger recruit. I was the the guy who like oh, I just got in because I'm I'm here though. I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. definitely here. Like I'm, I'm like oh, I'm here, but it's like. You know, I, I understand at the same time, I got that chip on my shoulder, like, man, these, they only got me here because of this. You know what I'm saying? They got me here because of this. So it's like, mm. I'm having that in the back of my head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's motivating me. It's yeah, like motivating say, me. It just turns your worth ethic up. Mm -hmm. It's motivating me. me. So um, we get there. I, I'm the first uh, spring come out, first spring roster come out. I'm like, obviously fourth on the depth. We got four mm -hmm. running backs. I'm fourth on the depth chart. It's like, Damn, like, man. You know what I'm saying? So they already had two running backs that was there. Um, they was high recruits. Already out of high school, and he was already a class ahead of me too. So it's like, all right, I'm definitely on the way looking up. They both were sophomores. And then Nick Hill was a freshman, and I was a freshman. So it's like, damn, right? I'm, That's the way I'm it's looking. Mind blown just hearing this. So mm -hmm. keep going though. But it's, that's the way it's, it's looking. Right? It's like just going up. Like damn, right? So um, we go into spring ball. Um, spring ball. They obviously just kind of seeing like my first carry or my first uh, practice when we had full pads on. Mm -hmm. They seen that shit. They were like. Oh, like, okay, we got something. Did you run somebody over that yes, day? Yes, I ran somebody over that day because I made it a point. I made it a point to do that because I got to I got to show. I got to show up. Like right now, <laughs> this that first day of practice. I'm about to show y'all right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I ran some and and it, the, it really got people attention because they had a one of the linebackers. He was like a one of them All American type guys that was already mm -hmm. there. And first rep, 
I'm ready to go with you. Them niggas be you know big, saying? homie. I don't know but, what it is about a linebacker. They don't be having no neck, and then it just look <laughs> like they lift everything in the room. Yeah. Just, God, the, goodness. The, the, the back I was going to get, he wasn't that big. He was more like finesse. <laughs> he was more finesse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real, he like more like finesse yeah. guy. So, but I was just ready to step up with him, whatever, and coach was liking that. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, you know what I'm saying? He ready. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And – so we had our first practice. Our first practice, I snapped in the first practice. So literally, from the next week, I went from fourth to third mm. on the depth chart. Right. Mm. So now we coming in and like, all right, excuse me. So now we still in camp, right? We still in training camp. Now we like, all right, we going into about to get ready to go into the first week. Uh, I forgot who the fuck, who the fuck we play. I forgot. It was on <laughs> you know, but, uh, I think it was one of the uh, Michigans, Western, the Western, Western, Michigan, Western Michigan. Western Michigan. Yeah, we, play, we, we getting ready from Western Michigan yeah. and shit. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we lean up, so now it's like, all right, so we like two weeks out. So now we find out if I'm getting red shirted or not. And mm-hmm. it's going to tell me a lot. Right? It's going to tell me a lot. Right? If y'all like, fucking with me or not. Yep. I'm going up. Damn, mm-hmm. I'm third on the depth chart, but I'm not red shirted. Oh, shit. Nick Hill red shirted. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, oh, damn. So, all right. Move me mm-hmm. up, boom. And Nick that was your homie, too. Yeah, it's still my, it's still my guy. <laughs> but it's like, shit. You already know what it is. Like, I got to go somewhere. Like, shit. All right. So, um, the leading up to the to the week, whatever, third and depth chart, right? <laughs> that same week. So now we prepping for uh Western Michigan. Mm-hmm. All right, we running our plays, getting ready for the, the team that we about to play, right? That week, Larry Caper, he was the second guy, he hurt his hand. Mm-hmm. So he was out for like three, four weeks. So he ended up so that instantly now I'm second. Like, yeah. oh shoot. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, oh damn, like after the first possession, I'm going in. Like oh, they damn, right you know what I'm saying? Hands, man. Mm-hmm. So now the game come, you know what I'm saying? Um, the number one guy, Edwin Baker at the time, mm-hmm. um, he the doing his thing, obviously doing his thing. There's nothing against Edwin Didn't doing his thing. Yeah. But I snapped. Like, I ended up having, like, <laughs> whatever, 10 carries no, for 141 bro. yards. And I had two tubs or whatever mm-hmm, it was. Like, I snapped, like, my first game. And that low-key, like, like kind of, like, set the stage. Like, yeah. okay. And that, and, that, and that gave me confidence, too. That gave me confidence. Like, damn. Hell bro. yeah, shit. Oh, like, I am as good as I thought. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. a lot of times, Kyle, you don't really know. But it's like, damn, I'm yeah. in college. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right. Damn, I did it in practice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I did it in training camp. I'm going against my own teammates. All right, I did it. All right, let me do it in the game. And it's like, I do it in the game. It's like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like confidence and everything. I was going to say, that was there. like, I, I guarantee that mm-hmm. was like, let's go. Let's go. Like, I got let's it. Go. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm 17. I'm already doing it. I can do this. Let's go. Because you did, yeah, you graduated early, so that's mm. that's fire, bro. That is too fire. So, your emotions on draft day. Mm. You still got that chip on your shoulder, I imagine, right? I do, because yep. I really got it, because now at this point I'm using it for fuel, because I'm not the number one guy mm-hmm. that they're talking about. Um, they're talking about um, Gio, obviously, mm-hmm. shout out Gio. Um, shout, they're talking about Eddie Lacy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, these are the guys they were talking about at the time. And fairly so, they had great college careers or whatever, but it still motivate me because sure it's like, man, I feel like I did this or did that, blase, blase, but it's cool. Mm-hmm. So when draft is coming, like, I remember I'm being I'm at my house. Um, I'm at my house. I'm just kind of having like a, like, I don't know, we got the TVs on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Day, day one, uh, draft day one, we didn't really have, like, I was just kind of like by myself. Like, I was with my mom. Like, my mom was there, but yeah, I wasn't be- expecting being drafted day one. Like, I wasn't expecting that. But it's like, damn, if I get called, like, whoa, I was ready, but it's like, I wasn't yeah. really expecting it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was kind of chilling day one at the crib. We just watching the draft. All right, didn't get drafted. All right, day two come. Mm-hmm. All right, this is when we have, like, kind of like our draft Function. party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the over. day we expecting it. You know okay. what I'm saying? So um, it's like it's like pick number, like, 44 come up. Mm-hmm. And no, no, 46 come up. Pick number 46 come up, yeah. And then that's when uh, I get a, f- a phone call. It's like a Pittsburgh area code. It's like two picks before my pick, right? It's like my Man. Pick. I answer my, you answer my phone. I answer my phone. I just remember answering my phone. And this is not like the times in today where it's scam likely calling your phone. And right, 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 right. Man, don't, don't even answer mm-hmm. that. He like, shit, bum. <laughs> I'm answering this shit. <laughs> right. So it was a. Uh, so I. My phone ringing. I'm in the house. I answer it. Yeah. All I hear is, Le'Veon, what's up, man? It's Coach Mike Tomlin. How you doing? I instantly, I had no shoes on. I just 
yeah. run outside. Yeah. I'm running up the street. I don't even know what the hell to do. I'm just oh. running, running up the street. I'm like, like low key crying and crying now. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, Coach, what's up? Yeah. Like, damn, like, yeah, what's up, Coach? Yeah, it's Le'Veon, how you doing? He's like, what's up, man? You ready to be a Steeler, man? Oh, oh my like, gosh, I'm like, bro. Coach, like, yes, I have no, you have no idea. I'm so ready to be a Steeler. Blase, blase, you know what I'm saying? So we had a quick conversation. Then he like had me had talking like to all the other coaches and like the GM and everything. And then two picks later, all right, so like I have the phone call, right? If the mm-hmm. phone call was probably like eight minutes or whatever. He's like, yeah, man. He said, well, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go now. I mean, go in the house, man. Watch your name pop up on the screen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. all of a sudden I was outside. So Bro. I was like, all right, coach, you know what I'm saying? So I go in the house, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, like, everybody see me run outside. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, everybody see me run say. outside, so everybody looking at me when I come back in. I'm like, it's Pittsburgh. They were like, yeah, hey. let's go. You know what I'm saying? So um, they all looking at yeah. the, they all looking at the, uh, we all looking at the TV now, and then we just waiting, waiting. Then it's like, it's crazy how, like, now I'm thinking about it, though. It's crazy how they let the time run all the way down. Like, they don't know yeah. where the pick is. Like, yeah. They already knew they was picking yeah. me, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't know, maybe something. Y'all. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if something could maybe happen or something. I don't know. But I was just be thinking, like, damn, what's taking so long? They, they better not change their mind. Like, like, right? Honey, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. It's coming up. <laughs> like, don't, don't change your mind. Like, but, yeah, I be always thinking. But that's how I, that's how I went. So I ended up um, seeing my name and shit. My mom was like, I told you, because my mom low key was, she been, like, my whole family grew up in Pittsburgh, yeah. my whole life. Yeah, you guys are in Ohio, so you're not too far mm-hmm. from Pittsburgh. Yeah, so my mom, she was like, I told you, you gonna get drafted by Pittsburgh. I told you. Like, because she was, far. she was been saying it, like, mm-hmm. my, I, but she was just saying it, because I just feel like you're saying close. it, because you're a Steeler. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a Steeler fan. You're just yeah. saying it, like, right. But she was like, nah, I told you, like, but bro, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. You went over there with Ben Roethlisberger, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, that's wow, man. I mm-hmm. mean, that. That is wild. Playing from like Tomlin, that locker room you guys had there, like that is some legendary stuff. You guys, yeah. and I mean, you got up there and you had yourself like one of the craziest rookie years right out the gate. Mm-hmm. Probably that huge chip on your shoulder. Right. Well, I mean, what was that whole locker room like coming and playing with Tom, Mike Tomlin, who's known as a player's coach? Yeah, I mean, Coach, coach Tomlin is like one of the most real coaches that I've, as he probably is the realest coach I've been around for real. Mm-hmm. It's like, he going, it's not necessarily like, People like him so much because like he's not afraid for you not to like him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he's like he's like one of them guys who are real stern. He's gonna be real honest with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He know how to speak well. Um, he can relate to for me. He can relate to me like that's right. in, in a sense like no other. You know what I'm saying? And so that's key too. Yeah. So he he's like a player coach because he's like the reason why, like it's different t- styles of player coaches or whatever. But him, he's more of a guy like. He's on you, but it's not like to the point where it feels uncomfortable to come up and approach him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, he's tangible. Some people, yeah, some people, you like you, you, you like they get on you, and you kind of feel like they're not really approachable because you feel like you don't really know how to approach them because you know what I'm saying? They always on you. And like the, the energy they always you're giving on me you. is like you ain't fucking with me, man. Yeah, he's always you know telling me bullshit. So, but Coach Tommy, I don't know. He has that that perfect kind of like medium. Like, all right, I'm on you, but like I'm approachable too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And the way he kind of lets you do your thing, like his 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 rule, like he always kind of go by is just don't be the guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he not about to sit around and make a whole bunch of rules, like don't do this or don't do that. Yeah. He always said like if we sit around making rules, we ain't getting to the the shit that we need to be getting to. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So Focus he said on something else. Yeah. He said so he just always be saying like don't be the guy, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So don't be the guy always. I don't know whatever it is getting mm-hmm. the live yeah, I was just about the to night say. before the game or something like <laughs> you know what I'm saying whatever it is like oh, we man. didn't have them cases like hey niggas done went out before the game like we had some cases but yeah Coach Tommy he always kind of you know he's he, he's a guy who always kind of he's fair and you know a great coach you know what I'm saying like he, he's definitely one of them guys who who deserves everything he done got everything he done got mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. you know he's Great coach. You know That's saying? right. Nothing, nothing, bad I gotta, nothing bad I got to say about Coach T. Uh, so one of your teammates while you were there, Antonio Brown, what mm-hmm. was it like playing with him? Because, you know, he's really circulated the headlines <laughs> across <laughs> what we do here a little bit these days. And, you know, he's definitely on top of everyone's mind. So everyone, I think, wants to know what was he like as a teammate? What was it like? What was your a- relationship yeah, with him? Yeah, A.B. cool. I mean, me and A.B., I have no, like, obviously it all looks a certain way, but A.B. Mm-hmm. cool as hell, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I talk to him, you know what I'm saying, about whatever, whatever we want to talk about. Like, like he's yeah. like a guy, like shit. I talk to like 
you know what I'm saying? Like this. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, mm-hmm. and he'll talk to me the same way. Like, um, even, even when everything that, that happened on the sideline with Tampa, it was like, damn, I low-key wish I wasn't in the game because I felt like I could have been one of them guys who yeah. actually did, like, all right, A.B., bro, come on, bro. Yeah. Like, who actually, like, calmed you down. For real, for real. I, I actually believe I could have. Yeah. Um, no, you could, for sure, for sure. And he, uh, you know, he, he but he still, like, he, I feel like he's a guy who, like, really kind of misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he had, like, some, some moments. Um but he, I feel like he's overall, he's like obviously a great person. Yeah. Um, he's a great father. He take care of the things he needs to take care of, and he's kind of like a misunderstood person. I, I was think just even say, all, he's I think, a goat. He just got a lot on his plate, man. And people yeah. are just misunderstood, bro. Right. That's all it is. And I, I, and, I, and I feel like, in the sense of my, even with me, like I feel like I'm so misunderstood in a lot of aspects. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's why it's like, damn, AB, I feel where you be coming from, bro. And I be trying to talk to him in a sense, like, bro, that's why you can't give him no ammo at all. Like, mm-hmm. literally nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. they can literally pick what they want to take and run with. You know Straight what I'm saying? Up. So, it's like, you got to just, I don't know, keep your head down. And yeah. the same thing he was telling me. It's like, damn, I be repeating the same thing he be telling me. He, he don't want to be telling me, like, bro, you got to just play the game with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, that, and other. He, like, always got to give me good advice. You know what, mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? AB, he's a great teammate, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's one of them guys who... I could talk to him whenever about whatever. Do y'all got the same vaccination plug? <laughs> <laughs> because if so, nah, y'all silly. <laughs> <laughs> y'all silly. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he ain't messing with them shots. I feel like I ain't messing with them needles, bro. I ain't messing with them needles either. I ain't lying. So you fucking with his music at all? You listening uh, to AB's music? I heard it. I heard it. You heard, heard it? it. Heard okay. It. I heard it. Y'all got a collab coming got on you. the way? Nah, no collab. <laughs> no, <laughs> no <laughs> collab. That's right. No collab. That's right. Uh, so, you know, a big question I had today is you're at a pretty interesting point in your career. You know, I, do you see yourself continuing to, you know, play in the league? Do you see yourself really starting to lean into the music more? You know, we did see you had some tracks with Lil Dirk. We listened to some of the music beforehand, and shit slops. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. Like, he I, like it. Yeah, I've been still making music, obviously. Um, I've been locked into the studio real heavy lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been boxing heavy. Because um, mm. that's going to be like my next transition is going to mm. be boxing. boxing. Call Jake Paul out. Please. I, mean, just, bro, <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I did. He looked at me did. like, motherfucker. I did. You no, helped me get him out there. Yeah, yeah. I did. But it's like, it's like, I understand why he wouldn't fight me. Like, I would I totally understand because it's like. I know, know why too. Yeah. yeah. You're I would understand. Right. Yeah, so. That's that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I called him out. I said what I said. You know what I'm saying? If you want to fight somebody else, I don't really mm-hmm. care. Or if you trying to do MMA or something. He's trying to, I guess he's trying to switch something else. I'm like, all right, he ain't trying to fight me, bro. So sound like a duck to me. Yeah, that's what it sound like to me. Too. Sound like it's, like, it's like whatever. Yeah. But that's my transition is going into boxing, and I've been doing that heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, I look, even going. I've been going like that every day. Like, every day. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously making music. Uh, and then with football, I'll start training like around the same time I start training, like around March, April ish. Okay. Um, and my, my idea with that is, I mean, I want to get into a camp, training camp, because I just feel like, all right, the last two years, so I was with the Jets in 2019, right? Mm-hmm. Until 2020, I played the first four games. No, I didn't. I, I got, so I played the first three games, in, or the first game got hurt, and then mm-hmm. I was there for like three more weeks, played the next one. And then after five weeks, I went to Kansas City, right? Okay. So, ever since then, ever since, before, like, when I was with the Jets in 2020, that was my last training camp that I went to, and I've been on three different teams. So, I went from the Jets, and I went to Kansas City. When I went to Kansas City, I wasn't in training camp with them. Mm-hmm. And then I went to, from Kansas City, I went to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like. How they, is that, bro, going from, like, traveling like that, team to team? Did, did, did it, that affect you? It, it's different. It's different. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it didn't. What do, you, what do you mean by affect? Like me? affect you Especially as far like as I, I want to play here. You know what I mean? So yeah, anywhere that I went, I, that's where I wanted to play. Straight up. Yeah, anywhere right. I went, that's where I wanted to play. That's I, right. Yeah, I, it ain't like anywhere I was forced to play yeah. or something. Like okay. anywhere I chose, like it was plenty of calls, and it's like, nah, I want to mm-hmm. go there. You know what I'm saying? Or, that's right. But but the, any like Baltimore, I wanted to go there. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. it was a great opportunity for me. I feel like I'm gonna go there. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like the only thing that was kind of holding me back because I I didn't get the the chance to go in training camp. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a big part because when you're there and you kind of like got to pick up the offense on the on the fly, like you're there mid season, you mm-hmm. got to pick up the offense on the fly, and then 
I don't know. I guess I haven't made enough plays since 20, like 17, I guess, with the Steelers. So people kind of like forgot in a sense. It's like I'll make a play in practice. It, it'd be a guy like, okay, if I'm running, if I'm running like an option route, right? Okay. And a guy sitting three yards inside of me, I'll break. I'll still break inside and win, and then and, and catch the ball and run. And people would just be like, "How did that happen?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like they can't believe that shit. So I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't really trust it. Like, cause that if the guy's inside, you're supposed to break out. Right. Like, that's mm -hmm. but it's, it's coached. Like, okay, if that guy's sitting inside of you, Le'Veon, you, know, you go to him, you step on his toe, you break out. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's coached. That's where it's supposed to go. But in a sense, it's like, damn. If I break inside, I can break for a bigger run, bigger gain, and stuff. And I'm one of them guys who I can break inside. Straight but it's up. like some people just can't believe that shit. Like mm -hmm. that's why I was with Coach T. I feel like he was a guy who kind of just let me do my thing. Like mm -hmm. even like in the patient sense. Like yeah. he he went he ain't ever like let me on hit the hole. Like he always do your like, thing. Two six, bro. Do you you, go, you got it, bro. Man, it's you like a, it's like a machine that's running. You can't just everywhere stop else. The machine, everywhere bro. else, I done went. They always like want me to change something. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, they want me to run a certain way, and it don't look how they always see it. So it's like, it, it, so they, they like, damn, I don't think it work. Mm -hmm. But it work. It just, it's different. Yeah, it's that's you. all it is. Yeah, it's it just different. That's all it's it is. Called bell time. That's what it is. <laughs> you can't teach that. Now, you literally you can't. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I know you want to ask him about this. He loves it. Oh, mm -hmm. so you into gaming at all? Are you about to talk about Smash? Talk about Smash, brother. So everyone... Hey, hey listen, listen, listen I'm, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. I'm going to stop you right there. All right. Unless you're like Tweak, or like one of them like gamers, like number one in the world or something, like mm -hmm. MK Lay or something, unless you're one of those guys, you're not beating me in Smash. Okay. Mm. You're like, like I'm dead serious. Like, you're not beating me in Smash. I'm, it's like one of those games where it's like, I've low-key been playing my whole life, and it's like undercover, like... High level, like type <laughs> shit. Like, nah, <laughs> cheat code. Like, I'm dead ass like, serious when I say that. You know, like, nah, it, that's the crazy part. It's not every character I know. I stick to one guy. Who's your guy? That's Mega what I'm about Man. To ask. Mega Man. Mm. And I stick to one guy, and it's like I know everything about him versus everybody. So it's mm. like I can't be fucked with. Ooh, line it up. I mean, oh, oh, so you think you're nice to smash? I've just been told by a few people I'm pretty good. Oh, so, shoot. Like, we, can run, hey, we can run we, it. We got to run it up. Oh, we definitely can run it. Okay. We definitely can run it. Hey. We can run that. We can That's run that. What it do. So how'd you get into Smash over all these other games? You know what I mean? Everyone plays Call of Duty. Everyone Bro. plays the Fortnite now. But I mean, I, I still I play Call of Duty. I, I'm Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. I play I, Call of Duty. No, I still play it a little bit, but like yeah. Smash is like my game. I've, I've been playing that since I was little, since I'm... Nintendo 64. N64, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, then he come out with a new one, then new one, then new one, new one. So this is the newest one. So it's like, I, yep, this is what we playing. That's what I'm playing. So. That's right. That's it, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I don't remember how exactly I picked it up. I think just me and my brother, like me and my brother, he, he, uh, he was the one who, who was like the Mario, like, Guru, like he loves Mario games. Yeah. Like he's still to this day getting Mario backpacks and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everything, like you know what I'm saying? Little brother, right? So <laughs> I think like when we was younger, um, he kind of got me to the Smash, like into the Smash kind of like idea, because I was like all these sports. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Turbo Bowl, Turbo Bowl, Turbo Bowl. You know what I'm saying? That's all I played. <laughs> so That's he kind of got me into the idea, like start playing Smash a little bit. And this yeah. is still at a young age. I'm probably like, what, six, seven years yeah. old. Yeah. I'm playing, and he was four playing Smash. <laughs> so it was like, all right, let's play Smash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But ever since then, I've been playing the hell out of that game. That game crazy. Like, yep. you, gotta fade, you gotta fade the catch now, man. Cause oh, it's gonna happen. Like, yeah, I, I, bro, bro, we gotta we play, play now. We can play it, bro. All right, before we before we finish, I need five essentials. Le'Veon Bell cannot live without. Mm. Music, iPhone. Well, give me five of them. You can't go without. Music is definitely one. Okay. Whose music? Your music? Who you listen My to? My music too. <laughs> but like, I obviously fuck with Drake. Mm -hmm. mm. I fuck with um, bro. I fuck with so much music, bro. It's hard to even say names. I don't even want to say names because it's like I find gonna leave somebody out, and it's like I don't fuck with them. Mm -hmm. But I do fuck with them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like all right. But I say Drake because like he's my number one, and everybody else kind of like all right, it falls under. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm -hmm. um, damn, my father's in, bro. That's hard, bro. Come on, man. Uh, you want me to tell you mine? Yeah. So, so, so you, feel, I, you know what I mean? Let me hear what you got. All right, my son. 
Bro, see, yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll lead it. Don't trip. I got you. You didn't, you didn't make no wrong answer. You feel me? I can't so live. I gotta my categorize. Like I say, I gotta say kids because I got multiple. So okay. it's like I would have to categorize mine. Like that's cool. say if I say kids, yeah, I might take a ball. Like, hey, don't worry about <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. For sure, for sure. Lil Ski is one. I can't live without my iPhone because that's my dollars at this point. Um, my circle, you feel what I'm saying? I can't live without them for sure because I'm gonna be worried if I don't hear about one oh, from one damn. of them. I don't know my father's interest. Uh, I might need longer time. Mm -hmm. that pizza. I can't live without pizza, cuz. Mm. And um, shit. Uh, what's it? We for sure, mm. for sure. Mm. Yeah, say, there that was it probably is. The only thing on my list. I was. Mm. I'm wait. I'm like, hold on. What's number five? Man, there it is. Damn, so don't, so you go now, Fabi. Yeah. So you, we let him simmer. Bro, let, I don't let, know. Let me, look, I mean, let honestly, let him it was just one. You give me weed, we're good. <laughs> oh shit! Oh well, shit! We had dreads, bro. She got really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't imagine that. No, shit. I, know. I, I gotta see that. Shit. You got some <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull you up after. I'll show you, you got some pictures or something? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Oh that my god. <laughs> All right, well, he only chose one, so that's cool. He said his weed is good enough for him. Yeah. I no, I mean, obviously, you got your kids. You got, mm -hmm. you know, the missus back home. You got your right. family. You got the close ones. Those are all you might have That's what I'm saying. That's all I really need. I mean, like, I, need, I don't really need too much. Even like I told you, like, even since I was a little kid, like, when I'm playing huh. football, I told my mom, like, I don't really need that much. Mom just got me these pair of shoes. So she can make it happen. But it's like, mm -hmm. I don't really need that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's even right. like now, it's like, I don't be buying a whole bunch of cars and stuff. And I, you know what I'm saying? I get into housing, like, my houses, whatever, but like I don't got a whole bunch of cars and like a yeah, well, whole bunch of other shit. Like what, yeah. what a whole bunch of other shit people got? Like designer shit. Like I mean, I got some designer shit, but it's like I don't yeah. be going crazy. Like, yeah. Everybody else be going crazy. They spend a hundred thousand dollars. That's only shit. for like, when it's time to step out. Yeah. It's not on like, that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I be chilling. Like I literally be chilling. Spend it on Smash Brothers. Oh yeah, bro. I'm trying. I'm about to start streaming. That's why I need to start doing. You yeah. got to start. I was gonna say. I was gonna ask you if you'd be streaming at all because I that would go I lit. Need, I need to stream, bro. I need to, bro. You need to get. I get, get you set up. Yeah, let me get set up. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, yeah. come pre-stream with us. I just need to get, get, get set up. Like streaming. I could, bro. Let's get cracking. I'm, I'm really with that. Like I'm not sure, man. We got to, you know we're gonna do this so people could see that it's real, man. That the homie came through. I don't know that it's gonna actually stay on there. Which way is outside? It might. It might. Man, we highly appreciate y'all, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe if you already haven't done it. It's your boy, Josh. You see him, Professor X. We got, look at him over here, man. Ooh. Legendary. I put the two six on there, too. Hey, hey, that's right, man. We highly appreciate you coming through, man. We no, know I you got to slide and handle your business. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was great, man. I just started this off, and... It's a dream come true, bro. Nah, I'm most definitely. Huge. I appreciate Real your talk. having me. For real, real shit, though. Hey, we gotta have you back. We come show. Sure. Nah, yeah. Part you two, know. man. You already know. Real shit. We're back. Live. Not live. I'm just joking. But we are <laughs> back. What did you think <laughs> that interview? Let us know in the comments. By far, like we've only done a couple of these. My favorite. Ricky they, Williams was incredible. Psh. Like just, I've never done an interview really. Mm -hmm. Except for a couple of these, that was my favorite interview. Sitting down and actually getting to ask questions, mm -hmm. get the answers to questions I had was, you know, it's, that sounds very easy and like the point of interviewing, but it feels very different to ask these superstar athletes something that you've wondered about. Yeah. And do, he did not shy away from that AB uh, not being maybe the best rapper out there, even though Kanye seems to be. Oh, like, Le'Veon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah, yeah but Le'Veon said that AB was not that great of a rapper. Well, you know, he said he didn't, he he said he didn't love. It. He said his stuff was potentially much better. He had his opinion on it. Let the com yeah. Let us know in the comments. Who, what do you think? <laughs> of, uh, I want to see them make a song together, though. Yeah, I want to see, see that happen. Did you get the vibe that they still wanna work together? Do you think that he's that they're still boys, or do you think uh, that think they, they might are. be done? I think, nah, I think they cool. I think they cool, but they probably just not on no musical tip. Cool. You feel what I'm saying? They probably just on some real life. Like, I mean. Mil they got millions, bro. They ain't worried about no songs really like that. Players got millions, but football is like none of that money's guaranteed. There's a reason they're you know they're still playing when they get as beat up as they do. Right. Uh, music's a great way. You know, there's a ton of potential with music and making money. Yeah. But it's just you know it's interesting. I just feel like those guys are. I don't know anything about AB. <laughs> but he feels like he's on the same weight energy as like Kanye at this point. Oh. What? Maybe having a lot of people around him telling him that he is the best, that he can do no wrong. Yeah. 
really just not maybe a lot of people in his corner telling him to pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Not that I'm seeing him do anything like crazy this time. Like he's been known for doing a lot crazier stuff. But just right. the overall energy, those two didn't don't seem to be on the same level. So I don't know. Maybe they'll do music in the future. Maybe they'll you know. A B, come down, man. A B, come tell him, you tell us your story. Come come let Josh know what it is, man. He think you're on your Kanye business. You feel what I'm saying? I already know bit. about the vaccination cards. You you uh let's talk about that too, man. Come on down, bro. Why bro. you need a card still? Me? <laughs> nah, I got the plug. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's Big the deal? Ski. What's happening? It would be crazy for me to have an opportunity like this on a platform here and for me not to talk about hockey, given the chance. Yep. I know that's not your first favorite sport, but we've talked a lot about it. We talked about maybe getting into your first game. Bro. I, I want to start talking hockey here. I want it to, to make sense to you. I mean, that's the whole reason we here. All right. Let's so, do it, man. I want to learn about hockey. That shit. See, hockey, bro, I want to go to a hockey game, so I agreed to going. But I'm going to be cold as hell in there, y'all. Like, Yeah, but you can bring a jacket. I'm going to need, like, three. Like, a hoodie. <sighs> oh, wait. Let's get it. A thermal, a hoodie, and the team jersey that we're going to go see. You know where Long John's, too? What is that? Them thermal pants? It's like a whole onesie. That's kind of like sus. No, no it's no. not sus. That's if you grow up in like really cold areas, that's part of the repertoire. Okay, I'll take that back then. That's not sus, but I'm not. You don't like that. for someone who doesn't like being cold. A man in a onesie, though. It, it's underneath all your clothes. But you still got on like, no, I wouldn't do that. You think it'd be hard to shit? Like, what if I, my stomach? I think hurt? they make them with like a poop. Flat. But what if my stomach hurt it though, and I'm running to the restroom, and I gotta peel off this jacket, peel off the jersey, peel off the hoodie? I'll be honest with that. you. I'm not. When the weather's it, that bro. cold and you're outside, I'm 35 now, bro. My stomach's not that strong. I wouldn't make it. The cold freezes your stomach. It really don't move that fast. Damn. So about hockey though. About hockey. Yeah. So my Bruins, my Boston Bruins, which I forgot on my first episode because I was nervous as fuck to mention, that is my team. That the jersey you be wearing with the B, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that's, wait, that's not blood. That's Bruins. Oh my god. That's what you need to know. That wouldn't be considered blood. I know. The Red Sox hat is though. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. 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 Uh my Bruins were just out here on a little West Coast swing. They won four out of five. They're looking pretty good right now. Oh shit. They uh, they're about no, they're number one in the wild card standings. The season wraps up in the next five six weeks or so before playoffs. They usually start around April. Uh -huh. They're looking pretty good. Uh, they're right behind the uh, Florida Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs for the division. So I feel like the Bruins are in a good spot here, mm -hmm. getting their shit together. Can't wait to see come playoff time how dangerous they're going to be. Realistically, though, there's one team in the league you got to know about at this point. It's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Before you get to the Lightning, mm -hmm. who's your favorite player on, on Boston? Boston, right now, it's probably, I'm going to say Patrice Bergeron, but that's an easy one because he is the captain. He's been there the longest. Marshawn's like been one of my favorite players to watch for the last 10 years now. Marshawn? Marshawn. Who? Brad Marshawn. Okay. Why? Who you know? I was thinking Marshawn Lynch. I don't know hockey. Uh, Marshawn Lynch could actually be probably be a that's really good like, hockey that's player. That's what I said. Who? Wait, what? Marshawn, if you're watching this and you want to play hockey, we'll line that up. Very true. That'd be easy. But anyways, the Lightning. Mm -hmm. Un fuego. They are. They've been the hottest team in hockey and probably for the last three years now. Okay. They won in the bubble. They won the cup last year. Mm -hmm which means their win in the bubble counts, and it's not an asterisk like other sports teams who won in bubbles, mm -hmm. uh, Lakers. And What is your thing? Like, <laughs> I just got crazy, a I just got Watch a when it's a Laker sitting across from you. You're going to be like... I'm going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> we'll say. Don't say nothing. Please don't let them know. Yeah! If LeBron were to sit here, I would sit the, say the oh, exact no, same thing. Oh, no, I things. know for a fact. You, you wouldn't let me. That. You'd no, probably, pa you'd probably no, pack no, no. me the fuck out, but I'm going to say the same I'm not going to say shit. a goddamn thing. I'm going to sit right. right here and let you just go ahead and do the, uh, what, what, remember when t Rail was talking all that shit and he was, oh, nah, we ain't going right. to do that. I'm going to sit right here and let you. 
but <laughs> Lightning, the team to beat. They uh, last week they played in Nashville at the outdoor stadium series game. Did mm-hmm. you know that they play one or two outdoor hockey games every year? Did you know that? Outdoor? Outdoor. That'll be tight to see. They play in like in football stadiums and baseball parks. They just did the one in Tennessee at uh, where the Titans play this past weekend. That's tight. I would want to see that. I, I mean, would want to see that. It's really cool. They only do a couple of these and there's a whole lot of elements you got to consider. The place has got to be cold enough. Doing one of these in Florida don't make a whole lot of sense. But, uh, you know, hockey is a game that started outside. So That's it's like crazy. there's this weird like ability to bring the sport like back to its roots. They wear these like dope ass throwback jerseys or uh, custom jerseys for these games. The teams do like go all out. They had it was in Nashville this year, so both teams dressed up as like cowboys pretty much, mm-hmm. like in country music. They were all wearing like uh, Canadian tuxedos, like all denim with cowboy hats and stuff. Mm. Like the teams that this fun, shit is on some crazy shit, man. They market the hell out of it. They like put on these like really dope parties in these cities like it was in Nashville have you ever been to Nashville hell no Nashville's probably I've been to Vegas only once and we're going to Vegas this weekend so we'll see Facts. how it lives up Nashville is like the best party city I've ever been in movie what not Na- is Tennessee Nashville it's oh, yeah. a vibe well uh we gotta check it out yeah we're gonna check it out for sure but because, yeah we're gonna party me. though in Vegas too though yeah you'll see mm-hmm you need to smoke some of this weed. Man. You know Big what? Chief, I do. Man. Need to Shout out to Big Chief. Man. Shout out our guys at Big Chief. Oh, one last thing before we wrap up this week's episode. <coughs> we got March Madness coming up. <coughs> okay. And I heard through the grapevine that we might be having a no jumper bracket competition where we have all the fans, if you're interested, sign up for this bracket, place your picks. We're going to give the winner of the what? bracket a merch bundle. What? Hey. See what Josh is presenting? I didn't know nothing I about this. To... This was a straight surprise. So could I, I know y'all were talking about my horn in the comments. He gets one. What? He gets one. Oh, if y'all really mad at me with my horn? No, it didn't work. They, Hold on. They can hear it. They got it. <laughs> but no, we really appreciate all you guys. We want to do like some more interactive uh, things with our fans here. So we're talking sports. Mm-hmm. Rather than just doing an office bracket pool, why not open it up to everyone who's watching the show and wants to compete and you know win some known jumper merch? Maybe we could throw a few other uh, prizes in there. But also, I did hear that we could potentially uh, be getting a bet opportunity where we are making some picks brought to you by a certain sponsor. Oh, wow. So coming real, real soon, we're, oh. me and C are going to have our uh, picks of the week. Oh. We got the bracket coming up. Ski, oh, tell them. Getting a sponsor. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. This guy. Oh, Lord. Look, what y'all, look at what y'all did. Y'all got us. Oh. I'm about to make every right pick. Y'all need to help. Hit Ski, man. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done already. Help me with some picks because it might be something I don't know. And guess what? I might slide you a little something. Okay, guys. So I got an update for everybody who's uh, been interested in what's going oh, on with the Patreon. First things first. You get a blowjob. You get a blowjob. <laughs> we love you. And we love you. We love you. And we love you. See you next time. See you next time. No Jumper Sports. Ski. Thank <laughs> you.